Okay, hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing this 4G, 5G antenna from Bluespot. Thanks to Bluespot, I've managed to secure myself one for a couple of weeks to test. Thanks guys. At the moment, this retails for 100 UK pounds and I've not opened it yet, so uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's open the box. Okay, so what have we got here? Okay, so uh, I'm guessing that that's the cable that comes with it. Uh, letters help you get set up site survey service. Well, that's good. I've seen that before online. So let's have a look. Okay. Mm. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so uh, there we go. That's the antenna itself. And uh, yeah, so uh, brackets usual um so yet again unfortunately as per other manufacturers there's no kind of instructions or anything like that and uh, to be honest that really annoys me because you really need to have some sort of instructions or, or, or certainly the specification sheet now i know that um, you can download that online but uh, i really think you should have that included now specifications wise the uh, blue spot here is covers uh, 698 megahertz to 4000 megahertz. Uh, it covers all the 4G bands and the 5G bands in the UK at the moment. Now, when we look at the gain figures of these, it has to be said that the pointing XPOL 25G, which is one of their main competitors, does have a better specification. It has a higher gain uh, listed for the frequency bands. Uh, some of the uh, radiation patterns show that this, uh, the XPOL 2 5G is particularly more uh, directional than the blue spot. Well, I made a comment on a previous review about the poor build quality on a competitor of these, and uh, it turns out I was being a bit biased because I'm used to cellular professional ones, commercial ones. Um, this actually seems pretty good, actually. Um, I'd have to say it gives me a bit more confidence than one of its competitors. So that's pretty good. Um, all in all, there's what more can be said. Um, one thing I would say is that I wish Blue Spot and their competitors would include the option to put your own cables because that means you can choose a lower loss one. That said, like I said before, they do have a higher quality cable, so that's a plus side. Clearly this is meant as a panel antenna to put straight onto your wall rather than uh, pulled out. But um, with the brackets, it does suggest that you can have some mechanical tilt on it, so that's always going to be a good thing. But um, nothing more can be said. What we need to do now is to go and test it. Okay, now we've looked at the product and how it performs in theory, we need to see how it performs in practice. And that means my usual tests with my trusty little spectrum analyze here and my trusty little engineering handset. And we're going to do the same as we've done before. So that means going out to a local site, measuring the wide band gain across all of the different bands, that's 800 megs, the 1800 megs, and the 2600 megs for 4G. Then we're gonna have a look at how it compares with the engineering handset. And finally, some speed tests on my mobile broadband router to see what the improvement's gonna be. Now, unfortunately, I can't test the 5G performance of this antenna because I don't have a 5G broadband router and I don't have a 5G spectrum analyzer yet. So uh, I can only do the tests on the 4G side of it. Okay, so here we have the uh, LT800 megahertz band there with a good signal of neg 20 dBm down to a poorer one of neg 90 dBm. And we can see here there are two traces for the blue spot and for the omni antenna, the stub antenna. We've got three carriers here. We've got the 3UK carrier there. We've got the Vodafone carrier there and the O2 carrier there. And what we can see here is the uh, blue spot antenna, some averaging there. The blue spot antenna there at the top, you can see, is quite clearly much stronger than the Stub Omni carrier there. 
Now when you look at the averages of the uh, blue spot there and the stub omni there, it works out that the average across the two is a gain of about 24 dBs for the blue spot relative to the stub omni. Okay, so this is the 1800 MHz band, which is LTE band 3, and I didn't manage to record both traces for both antennas, but we can see here, this is actually the trace of the blue spot directional antenna, and you can see the defined carries there, with a received signal of around neg 30, neg 35. Okay, so this is the LTE 2600 MHz band. In fact, this is LTE band 38, not band 7. And again, we've got two traces. We can see the blue spot uh, directional antenna there and the stub antenna here. And these do, uh, aren't really that well defined uh, for band 38, but clearly you can see the, the, the difference there in the signal, quite clearly the gain of the uh, blue spot antenna. And again, it works out for those averages as it did before for about 24 dB difference. So this is the engineering handset tests done with line of sight to the site, as you can see there. So here we have the engineering handset uh, results for the main cell list here. And we can see that the signal for the local mass there, the RSRP, is neg 60 for the uh, stub antenna of the spectral analyzer. And the equivalent one for the blue spot antenna is neg 43 dBm. So that's an improvement of 17 dB. And we can see with the line chart there, we can see a step increase in the uh, RSSI and a step increase in there in the RSRP to show that the improvement when we connect the blue spot antenna onto the LTE 800 megahertz band and we can see the same again we can see that the signal of the local mass there for the higher frequency is neg 74 which is to be expected that it's a lower signal level so neg 74 for the stub omni and that rises to neg 63 using the blue spot antenna so we can see there that that is an 11 dB improvement using the directional antenna. And again, we can see that there's a slight drop in signal on both antennas, and that's because of the lower coverage of the 1800 MHz band. And finally, onto the LTE 2600 MHz band. And here we can see that the signal from the local mast, again, lower, this is neg 82 dBm with the stub omni, and that's rising to neg 77 for the blue spot antenna. So that's only a 5 dB improvement. And again, as with the 1800 megahertz band, you can see that step decrease in signal level due to the higher frequency. OK, so in summary, then, when I averaged the number of results, we're looking at about 15 dBi at 800 megahertz, about 9 dBi gain at 1800 megahertz, and about 4 to 5 at the 2600 megahertz band. Now, of course, those were out in the field. This time we're testing the antennas at home, which is a suburban and multipath uh, environment. And this time we're um, testing the paddle antenna of the router itself versus the blue spot. So that's a kind of a more realistic um, test of what you'd normally use it for. And again, the L800 to begin with. OK, so with the L800 band, with the router's paddle antenna on the ground floor where you'd normally locate a router, we're getting an RSRP, that's the signal of the local mast of neg 110 dBm. But when we connect the blue spot antenna, it rises to neg 76 dBm, and that's a 34 dB improvement in signal. And you can see there the uh, line chart of the RSRP of the paddle antenna down here, but if you compare that to same chart there you can see the difference in uh, signal level between the two onto the 1800 megahertz band and as before the signal now is a lot lower with the paddle antenna this is down to neg 127 dbm but a huge neg 96 with the blue spot antenna so that's again a 31 db improvement and as with line of sight you can see the drop in signal when we select the different bands and that's both of course for the paddle or the blue spot. So when we compare an internal router with its own paddle antennas with the router and an external blue spot antenna then you can see for both the 800 and 1800 megahertz bands we can see that there's an over 30 dB improvement in signal. Now we need to know what that signal improvement equates to in terms of a speed improvement. Now comparing the internet speed tests, 
we can see that with the paddle antennas, we were kind of getting around about the nine megabits per second download, two and a half megabits per second upload. But when we connected the blue spot, and this is the same time of day around midday, you can see that speeds are increasing to like an average of 55 to 60 megabits per second on the download and 30 megabits per second on the upload. So you can see what a massive improvement in speed you get from a small antenna internally compared with an external high gain antenna. Okay, so after all of that, what have we discovered? Well, the Blue Spot 4G 5G antenna is very good. It does exactly what it says on the tin. The uh, antenna gain that we found is pretty much in line with what the manufacturers say, if not better. And installing one of those provides a massive improvement in your internet speeds compared with your router. But as to whether you should go and buy one, well, that depends on how it performs related to its competition. So I decided to test it against my pointing XPOL 2 V2 for 4G. Okay, so here we have the results of comparing the pointing XPOL 2 and the blue spot. First of all, having a look at the engineering handsets uh, signal results. With the pointing at L800 there, we can see that the signal of the local mass, the RSRP there, of NEG78, and uh, NEG76 for the blue spot, so pretty much the same really. Um, the quality on the pointing is slightly better, NEG7 compared with NEG9, so we might see an improvement in speed, but just a very small one. At the L1800, then again the local mass there has a signal in RSRP of NEG96 and the blue spot of also NEG96. So as far as signal is concerned, pretty much they're effectively the same. Again, the quality is a little bit better. So again, we might see an overall speed uh, difference that's uh, in preference for the pointing, but it won't really be that much. Okay, so on to the speed test comparison. Now I did uh, these uh, a couple of times during the day at sit once in the evening and once at lunchtime. And you can see here that pretty much the speeds are the same. Uh, different times of the day, once pointing was better than blue spot. And another time of the day, it was the other way around, blue spot was better than the pointing. But essentially, they're pretty much the same. And you can see here the overall kind of averages of the different times of the day. Kind of 56 down for the pointing, 55 down for the blue spot, and then 31 meg upload and 28 meg upload for the blue spot. So pretty much the same results really uh, when the azimuth is optimised for the best direction for my local mast. Now I also wanted to test the beam width of these antennas and I did that by to begin with orientating them as best as I can towards my local mass that gets me the best speeds and then after that testing at a kind of 30 or 40 degree uh, change in azimuth and whichever one turns out to be the best is the one that has the widest beam width. Now, having done that, the results are a lot more obvious. The uh, pointing here has an RSRP of NEG101 compared with 98 for the blue spot, so the blue spot's 3 dB better. The uh, quality is better for the blue spot. But more importantly, we can see here that the speeds are clearly better for the blue spot. We're getting 38 meg download speeds for the blue spot compared with only 26 for the uh, pointing. So clearly the blue spot is much better when you don't get the alignment as well as you could do. Now once we've done the comparison, what we can summarize is that for the blue spot, it's a very good antenna, it's got good gain, it's got a higher beam width than the pointing, but that means it's got less gain and isn't as directional. But as a consequence of that, it's more forgiving if you don't align it properly. As for the pointing, well, it's slightly more directional. As a result, it has a narrower beam width. And so to get the most from it, you need to be a bit more accurate when you're aligning it. But if you do so, you'll get better performance from it. As to which one you should go and buy, well, for 4G in general, they're pretty much the same. So the one you should get, in my opinion, is just whichever's the cheapest at the time. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, please do the usual subscribe, like, and leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Catch you next time.